This should be interesting. He's saying he's debunking me. Uh, let's make sure it's showing. Yes, okay, it's showing. Let's get on. This is why we can use the man standing still and the luminary moving over the arc. Because it's not us moving, it's the luminary moving. Let's go. This is at 80 degree. Look at the altitude relationship compared to the distance, shall we? 80 degrees. 70 degrees. 60 degrees. Hello. I'm back to reply to Flatsoid after he reviewed my video on one of his live streams. What I did was, I gave Mike here a personal bubble which matched all the parameters Flatsoid just specified. This means a line of sight to Polaris is automatic and Mike's angle to it is determined by his distance from the GP. At zero miles from the GP, the angle to Polaris will be 90 degrees and at 5,400 miles from the GP, the angle will be zero. That is how they got Polaris to the equator. This all sounds very good and Mike on his own seems to work just fine because the 60 nautical miles per degree is maintained. But notice you can't see Polaris here. It's assumed to be somewhere along Mike's line of sight. So it's supposed to be up there somewhere, or we're Polaris now, looking down at Mike. But then I introduced Michelle to the picture. Michelle's bubble works in the same way as Mike's, producing a line of sight to Polaris based on her distance from the GP. So then I asked, how is it? that Polaris seems to be in two places at once. It's all the way down here for Mike, and it's all the way up here for Michelle. Really, really low down, but Michelle sees it really, really high. <laughs> so how? Altitude angle, altitude angle, distance? is related to the altitude angle. Distance is related to the altitude angle. Do you understand that? I totally understand what you specified. You said the altitude angle is determined by the distance from the GP. And this is what we've got. This person, Rochelle, I think you said, is observing an altitude angle different to the altitude of Mike, which is much further away. So this is what we observe. This would be what Rochelle is observing. This would be what Mike is observing. You get it? So I don't know what you say. How is on it front. on this flat plane? I think you can see it in two different places. It's up here. Michelle. Sorry, this is this is just showing you have no understanding of how perspective works. Just have to be bl blankly obvious. Point to you, sorry guys. Um, but thanks for the try, though. <laughs> Let me show you what I've got going on here. We have a row of identical street lights, all 450 high, spaced at 100 intervals along the x-axis. Mike and Michelle are here, observers one and two. So both Michelle and Mike look at lamp number one over here by the z-axis. The apparent height for Michelle seems to be much higher than what Mike sees. Now you can call it apparent height, apparent altitude, angular size, it doesn't really matter, but the point is the same. Michelle measures 51.3 degrees and Mike has a much shallower angle, 13.1 degrees. Notice they both have lines of sight to the lamp. Michelle's is much steeper. Mike's is a lot shallower. So this is a little bit like what we saw earlier in the other presentation. With the exception 
that we can now see what it is they're looking at. Notice there are two right triangles. We could say that the lamp at the top of the pole is the star and the base of the pole is the star's GP. So we could also say for each observer that the lamp pole is the opposite side of their triangles and the distance along the ground is their adjacent. Now we know that the heights of each lamp pole is 450 but Mike and Michelle don't know that. They just know what height they are in terms of their angular measurements or angular size. So where are we going with all of this? Well, apparent heights of objects can change, but the actual heights will always remain fixed, no matter the perspective. But because Mike and Michelle also know their distances to the base of lamp pole number one, they can each calculate how high the lamp is. Mike uses his angle alpha, Michelle uses her angle beta, and both use their own distances from the lamp pole to independently determine the height of the lamp. Both will arrive at a height of 450. Mike calculated his height using tan alpha multiplied by the his distance, whereas Michelle used tan beta multiplied by her distance. I don't know why that says alpha. Should be beta. Can you spot it? There. There we go. Thought I changed that earlier. Um. So, PT, how can I explain this to you? You are trying to make height of your eighty-three degree angle to have the same height or altitude angle of the three degree angle. I'm not trying to make these altitude angles the same because clearly they're different. But remember, we're working with a flat plane here. Elevation angles for Mike and Michelle vary, but they both should be looking at the same thing and clearly they're not. And what did we learn from the lamp pole presentation? If you have an altitude angle and a distance from the GP, then you can work out the height of the lamp or in this case, Polaris. So in Mike's case, for three degrees and 5,220 nautical miles from the GP, his Polaris height will be tan three degrees multiplied by the distance will give us this 273. Same goes for Michelle. Tan 83 multiplied by her distance from the GP will give her a height for Polaris of 3,420. So as a little experiment, I shall be able to find out where the intersection lies on that Z axis. So the ray for Mike is G and that will be on the X equals zero plane. So there's Mike's intersection point and that's 273.34. And let's do the same for Michelle. Intersect. Here ray is I. And that will also be on the same plane. And that intersection point is up here. And that is 3420.63. How do I explain this? Rachel is standing here looking at an item here. This is an angle measurement to here. It's an apparent altitude. If moved closer, is that going to have the same height to Rachel in three dimensions? No. Uh, it, again, what do we say? IQ of a tuna sandwich. Why does it work for the lamps and not Polaris? Well, for one, we weren't subtracting the lamp's angular height from 90 and multiplying it by 60 in some vain attempt to reverse engineer a globe. It was just straightforward trigonometry. Your personal bubble theory is broken, flatsoid. And can I suggest that when you next try to get reality to fit a flat plane, try it for more than one observer to see if it works first. Well, that's going to be the end of this video. Thanks to all those who have subscribed already 
Uh, click the like, tell me what you think, and I'll catch you later.